Hi everyone, this time we're going to look at fringe flowers, fabulous fringe flowers. Fringe flowers came a little bit late in the history of quilling, so if you do see an antique with fringe flowers on, take note. You could be looking at something quite rare. They came late, but very much loved. So let's take a look at uh, what they can do for us. So fringe flowers can be divided into two kinds. There are true fringe flowers that have a centre to them and are obviously a flower, and pom-poms, which are sometimes used for flowers and sometimes for other things. So we're going to start with a simple fringed flower. Now I am going to show, as always, with beginning situations, um, everything on a fairly big scale. So I'm going to start with 1.5 millimeter strip. Those, if you bought them in a pack, would be very expensive, really, and not so versatile. So I always cut my strips from sheets of paper um, and that way I can get uh, they're much just much more versatile and I can make them any width that I want and any length that I want and if that line is not terribly straight it doesn't actually matter very much with the fringe flower so um, I would always do it that way you could you could cut it on a guillotine if you liked but um, yeah we're just going to use it like this um, and since most pairs of scissors most ones I've got will go through four sheets of paper in order to save time I would normally fold my piece in two so that I'm going through four sheets at a time it just saves time again people don't always do that um, and it's entirely up to you but what we're after is a nice fringe along this um, piece of paper um, so I normally hold it like this I'll, I'll do it first and then I'll and then I'll analyze what I'm doing Okay, so the way I hold it is my these fingers are behind, like so, and my thumb is on top, and I'm more or less resting my scissors on that finger behind. But again, this is this is up to you how you fringe. It's a good idea to get nice and close here. I would have said that three millimetres, really, that distance there is the maximum you would want to leave. Unless you're doing something that particularly requires short fringes, a normal fringe flower needs to be quite close to the edge. You could do it less than this, obviously. Um, and fringing is something that you get better at the more you do it. So, you know, it's easier as you go. It's also you can do it the fringes closer together. Some people like to use uh, a bulldog clip um, which holds the, the strip still as they fringe. So you would simply place your bulldog clip quite strong one if possible along where you are going to fringe, try and get it as level as possible. And then, of course, you would then hold the bulldog clip and fringe along here. I don't normally use a bulldog clip, so as you see, I'm not quite as fast if I do use one. Um, but again, it's to do with, uh, you know, whether you're used to it or not. Um, you'll notice that I'm not doing this. You know, because if I cut like that, there's always the risk that I could go too far and snip it off. 
So it's not so much cutting as snipping to the very tip of your scissors. Can't tell you how important it is uh, to have really good scissors at this. Um, if it's not working, it may not be your fault. It might be that your scissors are not quite sharp enough and they need to go right to the tip. And the end occasionally needs extra attention. The four places that, well, three places really, where the fold was sometimes need extra attention. So there and there. Just to make sure we've covered them all and all the fringes are roughly the same. I'm also going to get rid of that piece of white that was on the edge there. And then you have your fringed strip. Just check again that you've got those places that it was folded that you've got them right. Okay. So there's your fringe ready to make your fringe flower. Because we're doing an actual flower, not a pom-pom, you'll also need a middle. So um, I've made this nice and chunky again, it's about six millimetres wide, just so that you can see what I'm doing, but it, it could be less than that, obviously. Um, it's, so, it's entirely up to you, but it's a simple, solid coil. Um, you know, you can make big ones, you can make small ones, you can make two colour ones, that's up to you. It depends what you want your fringe flower to look like. Um, and then you glue your fringe flower, your fringed strip onto your flower centre. So if your paper, like mine, is white on the other side, be careful that you put the colour on the inside there. I'm just going to wait until that's a little bit drier and then start to roll. Um, you can, oops, if you can see that, I'm just going to put an extra bit of glue there just to make sure it's Okay, and then we simply need to roll this fringe flower up. First bit as usual, when you're rolling, the first bit is the trickiest bit. You don't need to glue as you go, but you could if you like, if you want it to be safer. Put the odd spot of glue here, if you feel you'd like it to be safer. And obviously the final bit needs to be glued down. Okay, so that you're ending up with something like that. And to be absolutely safe, I also sometimes, especially with such a big flower as this, I'll maybe put glue all over the bottom of here and wait for it to dry. Um, I'll see if I can get away with not doing that this time. Um, because this, this is the magic bit, if people haven't seen fringe flowers before, this is the bit they they like. And you get some oohs and ahs because magically the flower is transformed. Uh, the, sorry, your strip is transformed into a flower, which is quite nice. Now a mistake that sometimes people make is they don't... Uh, Press, they're not, they don't press these fringes back enough so that when the fringe flower sits down on the background you can see its base. And I often have to point out that it will look nicer if you can push it, your fringes further back so as to cover up the base. It also makes the fringe flower look better too. They don't all have to be pushed right back if you want the effect of some of them sitting up here. But there is your, your basic fringe flower. I can spend a lot of time actually faffing with the fringes of the fringe flower, but I don't mind that. Faffing 
is a good thing for me. So there is your basic French flower. So as you can imagine, you can make loads of variations on your French flowers. For example, they can be huge and they can be tiny. Um, and there are lots of other ways of varying them. This one, for example, I've rolled two fringes together, two colours. So, um, and rolled them round together, the, the central one. Obviously, when you do that, the one that's been rolling on the inside will be longer. So I'm just going to get rid of that just for the sake of tidiness. Um, and then I can stick this one down in the same way as before. Um, and this time it will produce something a little bit different. Again, I'm going to be quite masterful bending these back. So that you can see there's a sort of two-tone effect because I used the two um, different shades of lilac, which is quite nice. There's a sort of variety. Um, another way that you can vary things is the strip that you use could be coloured along one edge. What I did here was I had an A4 sheet of paper. I measured in a centimetre and a bit, drew a thick line with a felt tip pen, and then cut it up its middle so that half of the felt tip pen line was showing, so that it's nice and delicate. That means the edge of the sheet of paper um, is ready with another half for you to cut to make it your next one. So when that's fringed and made into a fringed flower, it, your flower will have a nice, delicate uh, little edge. Tips to the petals. Um, you can get a nice effect by varying how, much you, how wide your fringes are. So, um, you know, you could try to make it as, as a fine as possible, or you can deliberately make them thicker. Uh, and on this one also I have curled them, so like I said, you can faff with the fringes of a fringe flower, um, and this one is sort of curled outwards. Be warned, um, when you fringe widely, like this flower is, this is likely to happen. It's what I call bunching. So that the fringes, for some reason, are all attracted to each other and uh, they, they create gaps like this. Um, so what I tend to do, if I can see it's happening, is I cut the fringe off, stick it down and then stick a new one back deliberately in a different place so as to um, cover up the holes. I don't know why it happens, but it does happen quite a lot. But anyway, the wider fringes make a nice um, variation. And this one also has wider fringes, but uh, I cut the strip, first of all, with some decal scissors, so that the edge was nice and decorative, um, which means that the edges of your petals uh, are not straight anymore, they're more natural looking probably. Yeah. So that's how that one worked. And you can see that this fringe flower is slightly different. These fringe flowers have got fringes that are not the same length. So what I've done with those is I've cut them at a 
on a slope. Here I've, I've measured a length and this end is about a centimetre and that one's about half a centimetre. So I would then simply cut along here. Um, and fold and I would most certainly use in order to hold that in place I would most certainly use a bulldog clip to do the fringing yeah that way around right on its very tip because that's quite quite a small amount and it's also going to be a bit fiddly so the bulldog clip will hopefully hold it in place before I started fringing. Remember that you're going along the sloping edge. Um, and that will create a, a flower that you can see these fringes in there are shorter and those ones are longer. You obviously you roll from the narrow end. Um, but my favourite way to do this actually to make a fuller fringe flower is to um, Take a full length or so. Um, I've measured up about one and a half uh, centimetres and I've marked the sort of halfway place with a little fold. So that's about halfway. So that is uh, parallel, those with the edge. This one is going to slope. I'm going to mark about maybe five millimetres in and this will then slope down from there on. So it's partly sloped, this strip, and partly straight. And uh, again, I would uh, cut it. You notice I'm, I would actually usually do this on the back. And I'm going to avoid just avoid the pencil lines. That's the slope bit and the straight bit. And um, this time I'm going to fold it twice, hopefully, keeping the straight straight edge along the other straight edge and the slope extra. And again. Uh, like I've said before, this is just to save time. Folding twice is only to save time. So please don't worry, if you want to do the whole strip, fringe the whole strip straight, then you do that. Then I'm going to fix this in place and then I can fringe. So you'll notice this one is obviously not, not as long. Um, and I won't do it all, but um, because I have made one earlier. But you see the bulldog clip really helps. Um, these fringes are very short, those along with the bulldog clip is really helping to keep everything safe and in position. Yeah, that's great. Um, and that flower actually turned out, this is the same turned out like this. Don't forget when you finished fringing that you should roll from the um, from the narrow end, not from the wide end, or you simply won't see the narrow ones. So nearly finished cutting it. The whole piece is now fringed and I can take this away. Um, you can see that we're going first of all on a slope and then a straight bit. And as usual I may have to give some attention. Oh no, that one's alright. Uh, I'll give a little bit of attention to this fold. But I think the other one might be alright. There we go. Um, I've made a centre for my flower ready. Put some glue on it. 
And remember, it's the narrow end that you start um, to roll from. Also, don't forget, if you wait on the other side, it will be the on the inside, like this. And so to start with, of course, that's very narrow. And as we go, it'll get broader. And finally, that'll be the straight bit to do. Which means it's sort of quite a big middle to this one. It means that you can actually see all the fringes. I'm deliberately doing it in this paper that changes colour along its length so that you can see the shorter fringes and the longer fringes. It just makes a different style of, of a fringe flower. So, um, yeah, fringe flowers make very pretty flowers and we've seen some of the variations that you can you use for fringe flowers. Um, now, a flower with a centre is a flower is a flower. Um, the other thing we can do with a fringe is to give it no centre and make it into a pom-pom. So, um, again, pom-poms do make pretty flowers. So we can use them for flowers. See, none of these have got a, a solid coil at their middle. Um, and they can also, the wonderful thing about pom-poms is you can use them for lots of other things as well. So to make a simple one, start at the beginning, um, there is my fringed strip and now I'm going to roll it so nothing at its middle. Uh, now see that I'm having a little bit of trouble with this beginning. I kind of can do it with my fingers once I get started. Um, so that's okay. But you may wish to use a quilling tool for this. The thing is, um, <laughs> I'm often teased about the fact that I don't use a quilling tool for normal rolling. That's because for a closed loose coil you're apt to get a bent middle which isn't very nice. Well, I don't like it anyway. Um, but for a fringe flap, for a pom-pom, it, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if this first bit bends back, in fact, because we won't see it. So if, we, if we're not going to see it, it, it doesn't matter if it's bent back, you know, quite a lot even. Um, and if you find rolling with a, this way of rolling easier, then, you know, I'm, I would say that's a, that's a fine thing to do. Um, because I'm not used to it, I would probably, I could probably start it with a tool and then continue using my fingers just because that's the way I would normally I would normally roll um, so get to the end here and as you might expect glue down the end wait a little for it to dry and then spread out the fringes Pom pom, the simplest pom pom that you could make. And like I say, it could be a flower, but it could be lots of other things as well. So, this little lady made an awful long time ago. Her Christmas moth is all made of um, pom poms as 
is the uh, trimming on her coat. So another thing you could do is um, make a little model poodle. Lots of pom-poms to be used on there. Looking perfect, even the little feet pom-poms. And um, the poodle's rug also. Um, that's just lots of a very big pom-pom made in this case uh, as an oval. We'll talk about that later. Um, but still, it's all it's all pom pom. And Sherry Rodehaver's wonderful hedgehog in a teacup. How good is that? That's really super. All made of pom poms. So they're very great and, and versatile. We're talking poodles, hedgehogs, rugs, Christmas fur. Endless things to be done with the pom pom. And just like with uh, an ordinary fringe flower, these can also be done on a slopey piece of paper. So, see, I started this as a slope, flat bit and slope. Um, that makes again a different kind of flower. I'm just finished fringing it. and undo it. You can see that this therefore is a slopey strip. I'm just going to do some extra fringes across the fold. There we go. Looking good. And again you would start at the narrow end, if you were going to do this sort of pom pom, um, I would almost certainly use a tool for this. When it's on a slope like that, it's really, really difficult to roll in your fingers. So um, uh, I would almost certainly use a tool for this job. Um, and as I say, this the centre won't uh, you. You won't see, you won't make any difference to its final appearance, so um, it really doesn't matter. I think I'd probably roll with this tool um, until I got to the, I personally would, uh, until I got to the part of this flower that's flat. And then take it off and roll in my fingers again only because I'm used to doing it that way. The bigger it gets, um, the easier it is to roll. Go down the end. And then when we open it, you can see that it will make a different kind of a flower spikier at the edges but you can see more of the fringes going down to going down to narrow. I have to play about with those fringes a little bit but that's okay but it's just um, a different sort of a pom-pom. And the steeper the slope you make the spikier um, effect you will get. So these ones for example probably I probably cut them, you know, like this. Really steep. So that that slopey edge will have been fringed like so from quite narrow all the way up here up to the wide really wide end. And that results in something extremely spiky. So, I mean, it all depends what sort of effect you you want to give. The 
So in a similar way, this extremely big spiky flower um, will have been on a very strong slope. Um, some short fringes in there and some really long ones here. And you can uh, adjust them and play with them and make them do all kinds of things. So it's um, another variation. Um, I thought I could should also point out to you that um, pom-poms can be shaped when they are finished. So in this little heart, for example, there are two pink pom-poms there. And then what I did with this one was that I cut the pom-pom. When I'd finished making it, I cut it into a square shape so that it would fit there. So I got a nice point here. So you can actually start cutting away at your pom-poms if you want to get a, a different effect. Sometimes that's really useful. And just like with fringed flowers, you can do them with lots and of different colours, just two here, red and yellow, and fine, fine, fine fringing. Um, or the two shades of lilac with a wider fringing. Um, and a spiky one with two colours also, um, and different widths within the same flower. So um, this one will have been, I don't know, 1.5 maybe in these, perhaps a two millimetre wide strip to get that sort of effect. So um, another thing that you can do is um, I'm going to do this in green and you might have guessed what I'm going to do because it's in green. You see that um, normally I would be saying as you're fringing you should be fringing right up to two or three millimeters from the straight edge. In this case you need to leave more, maybe a centimeter or more um, and I'm going to roll it up in the usual way and we will glue it down in the usual way. Roll it up quite firmly. Glue it down the usual way. Um, and then spread the fringes out. Not, not quite all of them. Leave the ones at the middle still standing up so that you get a nice pom-pom shape. Why on earth am I making a green pom-pom? Well, what you can now do is use a pencil or something similar to push this into tree shape. So that if you want to make a little Christmas tree, that's how to do it. Um, I would then remove the pencil and fill all of that with glue and allow it to dry, just so that the whole thing stayed uh, in, in position. Um, you can make them as tall as you like, just so long as they don't completely fall apart. Um, so this is what I use them for this little um, set of penguins and their igloo and their little fir trees round about. They were ideal for trees. So I just thought I would also point out that another variation um, that you can make with a uh, Pom -pom, is to not roll it at all. Well, not really roll it. You can start it with a fold. So, you see, instead of starting with a roll, I've folded. Um, this would be if you wanted to make uh, an oval shaped pom pom, um, which, you know, you can use for all sorts of things um, gradually as the fold gets bigger 
the fringe goes along. It gets easier to do, as always. You see the overall effect is, is this. Um, at the end, yeah, just glue it down. Didn't do a very long one here, so you don't get bored, but you do get the idea. Um, and then you can, again, fringe, uh, sorry, pull the fringes outwards, and you've got a oval shaped uh, pom pom. And one of the ways that I use this is when I've been making um, teddy bears. So you can see this little girl teddy bear is pom poms here and here, pom poms on her ears, back, head. Um, and the oval ones were what I used for her arms and legs. Um, they're quite quite long ones, but they work perfectly well as pom poms in an oval shape that will create uh, very believable arms and legs. So the variation that people often like is this one, which makes a very unusual looking. Uh, pom pom flower, and um, it's a case of a probably even wider strip than usual cut because you, you are then going to fold the strip in half long ways, and then um, you imagine a square at the end here. So you cut that off at about 45 degrees. Now, instead of cutting straight. Fringes, I'm going to cut them all on the slope. There's no way that you can fold with this one and, and snip, so it takes longer. So, uh, but try to keep them all parallel with each other. Slip away, keep fairly close to the edge. And so that you're not kept waiting, I'll show you. Here's one I snipped earlier. You can see that all of these fringes are at an angle, about 45 degree angle. Um, and then when you roll this up, uh, these folded um, fringes sort of open of their own accord. You won't need to do it later. You see the way I'm rolling, by the way? The, the fringe is is leaning that way. So that's the way I'm rolling, not against, not that way against the fringe. It won't work that way. Um, if you do it this way though, look at that. Quite a pretty thing. Um, and again, you just roll in the usual way, glue down the end which might be actually both parts of the strip. Glue on both parts. Stick it down. And you get this extremely nice uh, and rather different effect, which you can do for lots of different sizes. Um, if you like, do them really big if you want. With the strip, um, Fringe is quite far apart. Um, it makes a nice, interesting, and rather different pom pom or fringe flower. You'll have noticed that at the middle of this one, instead of there being a centre, there is another set of fringing. So that's a good reason to use a pom pom, is to use it as the middle of your flower. So, um, there's a pom-pom with quite short fringes here that I have hardly spread at all and then um, put more in yellow around the outside to give a, a completely different effect. And the same thing here, fine fringing at the middle and then very wide uh, around the outside well, for that sort of effect. Same thing here. Um, 
and they are extremely wide. I've also painted these uh, by hand to make this flower with its pom-pom at the middle and also into a fringe flower. It's nice that um, this is both a pom-pom and a fringe flower. So, fabulous fringe flowers with tight corners at their centre with the fringes cut wide and the fringes cut finely. And spikier ones with a strip as a slope. Pom-poms with no centre to them. Cut from a sloping strip again, nice and spiky, or oh, very spiky. And pom-poms made from an oval. And flowers made from a folded strip. Christmas tree. And finally, pom-poms with fringe flowers. <laughs>